Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to texture paint and bake our character. The first stage will be texture painting the high detail character like this. And because some people were asking in the comments about whether these characters I'm doing work for animation or game engines, I thought I'd pivot a little and turn this guy sort of low poly and animate him to see how it might look in a game. So in the second stage, we'll bake the color in normal maps so you could port over to a game engine like Unity or Unreal. This video is a continuation of part seven where we UV unwrapped our character. Check it out as it relates heavily to this one. Okay, getting started. I'm gonna go over to the shading tab. I'm gonna delete the image texture node we added in the previous video that has the UV grid image in it. I'm gonna rename this material Warrior as this one material is gonna be applied to the whole model. Now over to the texture paint tab to get to painting. Make sure you are in texture paint mode. And then over on the right panel, click on this button and then select base color. I'm gonna to increase to 2048 by 2048 and then press okay. Over in the left window, you can click here to see the 2D color map as well. You can paint in either window. Now let's start laying down the base color with the fill bucket tool. Select the fill bucket and then over on the right, I'm gonna create a new palette to save my colors as this can be handy when painting. Click new, then select a color. then the little plus sign button to add it so you can quickly access the same color later should you need to. I'm gonna click on the selected object to fill it with the color. Here I accidentally have the club selected, which isn't what I want. So tab into object mode, select the body, and then back into texture paint mode, then click to use the fill bucket. Now I'll select each of the other objects and use the fill bucket to lay down the base color. Here I want the spikes and the handle and ball at the bottom to be a different color. So with the fill bucket still selected, I'm gonna go over to the left window and click on the parts of the texture map that correspond to each part of the club I want to be a different color. If you end up getting a problem like this, where the fill bucket fills the whole texture map, you can fix this by clicking up on the advanced tab and lowering the threshold amount. Here I want to color the accent on the belt a different color but I didn't lay down a seam before. So with the brush selected, I'm gonna increase the strength to one 
and then change the fall off to constant for a hard edge. Then I can paint like this. Okay, now to the skin and face. To make sure the painting isn't too slow and bogged down, you can lower the subdivisions on the multi-resolution modifier to speed things up. I'm going to change the fall off of the brush here to custom and then pull it down into this shape. This makes the brush's edge very soft. And then I'm going to turn on X symmetry. Here I'm going to subscribe to a very general painting technique when it comes to the face. Divide the face into three equal parts and paint the middle part red, the top yellow, and in the case of characters with a beard or stubble, the bottom grayish blue. I'm a little heavy handed here at first, just to get the color down. I also use some purple around the eyes. I'm finding that the skin roughness is a little low, so I go into the shader editor and increase it a bit so the skin isn't so shiny. Then once the colors are down, I use the soften brush to soften everything up. Then, using the color palette and our base skin color from before, I go over everything once more to kind of tone it down a bit. Now onto the eye. I have a detailed video on texture painting an eye I did a while ago. For this one, I'm going to keep it very simple. Before I start, I notice that the eye sockets of the body aren't deep enough. So I tab into sculpt mode and inverting the sculpt draw brush, I dig out the eye socket a little more. Now for the painting, just a quick fill bucket for the iris, an inner eye with brown and black respectively. Then I change the stroke method to line here, and then paint in some subtle lines to get the look of an iris.
Okay, let's paint some of the veins that we sculpted in earlier. I increase the multi-resolution modifier so I can see the sculpt a little clearer, and then just go over in purple, then use the soften brush so it's not so harsh. Now for the hands, I'll start with the fingernails, just a slightly darker color than the skin base color for the fingernail bed. Then a whitish color for the cuticle area and the nail edge. Then using red over the fingertips and knuckles. I also use yellow for areas where the bone is closer to the skin. For the armor, I use some lighter colors along the edges to kind of simulate worn leather or metal, and then go back over everything with the base brown or blue to soften things, similar to the skin. Now for some small details, I'm going to turn off X symmetry and paint in some moles all over his body.
then X symmetry back on for some big nipples. You can add in bump and roughness maps for added detail, but I'm just going to keep this one simple and just do the base color. Now for the last step, to accentuate the look and give it a more stylized look, I'm going to add in an ambient occlusion node to the material. Going up to the corner here, I'm going to pull down a new viewport and then select the shader editor. Shift A and add in an ambient occlusion node. Shift A again and add in a color ramp node and connect them. With the node wrangler add-on, you can press shift Control left mouse button on a node to see it in an isolated preview. You can see the ambient occlusion node creates shadows in between the cracks and creases all over the body. To control this effect further, you can play with the color ramp slider. When you move the left black handle towards the middle, the intensity of the black shadows increases. I'm going to put it somewhere near the middle. Now to mix this effect with our painted layer, I'm going to add in a mix RGB node. Looks a little too white at first. To have the mix nicer, you can change the blend mode to multiply. You can control the amount they mix using the factor slider here. You can see when I slide it to zero, you see nothing but the painted layer we did earlier. When I slide it all the way to one, you see the ambient occlusion node at its strongest. I like it around 0.8. Okay, so now to take this guy over to game engine like Unity or Unreal, we should pare it down to a more low poly version and bake the materials here into a single diffuse map rather than having the procedural ambient occlusion node active as it is now. To do this, we will add in an image texture node in the shader editor, then click new and name it something like warrior diffuse. Change it to your desired resolution. You can untick alpha here as well to make the image smaller if you'd like. then press OK. To bake, you need to be in the Cycles Render Engine. Now scroll down to the Bake section and select the Bake Type Diffuse. This is the same as Color. You can bake the lighting here too, but I'm just going to do the color to keep things simple and keep the bake time low. Now I'll select all the objects of the model. Make sure before you press bake, you have the new image texture node selected. Then press bake over on the right. This process may take a few minutes. Once it's done, you should have a new texture map that looks similar to your painted one. This one has the ambient occlusion information in it. You may notice there is some overlap as my UV islands were not spread out enough to allow for the AO pass. From afar, the model doesn't look too bad though, which is thankful. Now you can just connect up the color to the base color of the principled BSDF node and delete the other nodes we had before. To capture details of the multi-resolution sculpt in our low poly mesh, we will now bake the normal map. Same as before, create a new image texture node and create an image that we'll call something like Warrior Normal.
You can untick alpha and tick the 32-bit float for better results and performance in the game engine. Again, selecting the Cycles Render Engine to bake. Down to the Bake section. This time we will tick the Bake from Multi-Res, as we have the multi-resolution modifier on the body. This automatically updates the bake type to normals. Now over to the multi-resolution modifier. Reduce the viewport level to zero. Now press bake. This shouldn't take very long compared to the diffuse bake. Okay, so now we have a normal map. Let's add a normal map node in the shader editor and connect it up to the normal of the principal BSDF. Now you can see the details of the multi-resolution sculpt are now applied to the low poly mesh. The shoulder is a little bit too jagged and low poly for me, so I'm just going to tab into edit mode and add in a few edge loops to fill it back out a bit. And that's it. There's a way to texture paint and bake a character. In the next video, we will reduce the poly count down to make the character a little better optimized for a game engine, and then rig and weight paint it for a simple run animation. Give me a shout on social media. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. I also have my newly created Facebook group where we can share art and ask questions. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.